What's going on guys? My name is Noah. I'm a depression survivor, anxiety survivor, mental health survivor, and I'm here with Douglas Block. Uh, he has been featured on the channel a number of times. This guy is one of the main reasons I was able to overcome a really aggressive suicidal agitated depression back in 2011, 2012. Uh, he remains a close friend of mine, and today we are going to talk about health anxiety. It's something that I can't believe I've never talked about before, but I've certainly experienced it. I've certainly learned to overcome it and thrive in spite of having a natural propensity to worry. And we're just gonna kind of free ball it, dive into the topic, and uh, I think it'll be really useful, interesting, amusing, educational, all those things. Don't you think? I hope so. I, about every two weeks, I <laughs> seem to get a request. When will you talk about health anxiety? I am imagining that I'm dead, even though I'm alive. So, um, in all seriousness, it's a very, very, uh, it's a very severe and crippling it's experience crippling. that many people yeah. go through. So uh, I, I looked up uh, before I came over to Noah's lovely studio. I went to my favorite place, the Mayo Clinic, and I just want to read you briefly what it says. Uh, it, by the way, when I was growing up, they used to call health anxiety hypochondria. Maybe mm. some of you might be old enough to remember that, or hypochondriasis. And basically, it's very simple. It's when you worry excessively that you're ill or going to become ill, even though there's nothing physically wrong with you, and even though all of the tests and all the diagnoses come up negative. And in the medical terms, negative means good uh, and positive means bad. So negative means they can't find anything wrong with you, no symptoms, and yet you're convinced, uh, you're, you have the conviction that there is something wrong with you and like nobody can really talk you out of it. Isn't that right, Noah? When it's you've absolutely been there? right. Oh, I've absolutely been there. And it's, it's horribly upsetting. It can lead to panic. It can lead to tremendous despair. Um, unthinkable rumination crippling right right when it's out of control and when when you're not managing it well it's bad it's really bad and as we know the mind is powerful uh whatever you believe whether it's true or not you can manifest symptoms for it even when you're okay so this is something that people right. i know i needed to take right. serious it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy it really does it's, so, it's crazy that way i'm going to read one more thing and it will completely free will it but i wanted to again from the mayo clinic um website like four or five symptoms that you know now again oh yeah this talk is not meant to diagnose any conditions or treat anything. This is just informational. And if you think you might have health anxiety, the best thing to do is to go to a good psychiatrist or a good mental health professional. And But we're just giving you an idea of what things people have gone through. Uh, so, of course, being preoccupied with having a, a serious you know, disease or health condition, uh, worrying that minor sensations in your body might be an indication mm -hmm. of that being easily alarmed about your health status, mm -hmm. um, finding no reassurance from doctors or, or negative tests, uh, worrying excessively about a spe specific medical condition or having a risk of developing it, uh, having so much distress about the physical condition you may or may not have that you can't even function. You can't go to work, you can't concentrate, you can't interact socially. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly checking your body for signs of illness, mm -hmm. or repeat, worse, repeatedly going on the internet. Oh my God. That's a huge that is one. A, that, is a, that is a devil edged sword. Yeah, but when uh, we talk a little bit, before you keep going, when we talk a little bit about tips or strategies, at least I'm going to share openly about things that I had to do to, right. to wrangle this in. Uh, not going to Dr. Google too much, I'll elaborate right. on that, yeah. but that was so, huge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just let the last three here. Uh, you know, re recently continuing going to medical appointments for reassurance, mm. avoiding people or places because you think you might get sick there, avoiding health risks, constantly talking about your health and the possible illness, and finally, here's the biggie we talked about earlier, mm. frequently searching the internet for the causes of symptoms or possible illnesses. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It, you, know it, you know what's interesting about this, though? I've spoken to people whom I had no idea dealt with any mental health issues. I mean, we all do on a spectrum, so I'm not trying to act like... Anyway, we all do on a spectrum. But I was speaking to some people who I won't name, who I never would have guessed had health anxiety, who absolutely do. They, they get a little pain in their chest and they wonder if, do I have a heart problem? Is there something wrong with my heart? Or, or they get a pain in their low back and they wonder if they have a kidney issue. I mean, where their brain goes straight to something is wrong with me. They call it the white coat syndrome. My dad talked about this. He happens to be an MD. And he talked about the phenomenon of doctors who go into training, uh, bright eyed, bushy tailed, excited to learn. Oh yeah, right, right. Then they and then they, gra think... they graduate from medical school right, with like right. a thousand rare conditions because right. uh, once you learn about it, you start micro psychoanalyzing yeah, right. yourself. I, I've and heard about Symptoms. Yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah, no, people, you're, you're around that too long and it starts to rub off on you. It really does. Um, it really does. And now, you said you've never experienced this physically. No, but I want to say that, that hypochondriasis, health anxiety, weirdo. 
What did you say? I'm just being silly. Yeah, is is an anxiety disorder. Right, okay. Like generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder. It comes under the rubric or heading of anxiety disorders. But it is really hard. I went to a really, really good psychiatrist once. A friend of mine was with me. And after the person left, he came up to me and said, you know, Doug, this is this is one of the few anxiety disorders I can't really treat. I mm. said, why not? And he said, I said, he said, because no matter what medication you put them on, no matter all the proof you give these people, you they have they, their conviction of being sick or maybe getting sick is so strong mm. that cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, and CBT, sure. you reject the irrational beliefs. I'm not a loser. I'm a really good person. Right. You, you substitute good beliefs for bad beliefs. Right. You cannot get these people to reject these beliefs, unlike CBT or other mild anxiety disorders. Sure, you know, or so even even OCD. Well, I, obviously there is a component of OCD, isn't there? Of course, because of the checking and the checking. Right. Yeah, I guess that's right. I guess health anxiety must have OCD components. That's mm -hmm. obsessive compulsive disorder components. But um, so yeah, so uh, a lot of people. I, I should have looked up like how many millions of people are suffering from this. It's got to be something absurd. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think everyone, in one way, shape, or form, has come across something like this, right. except for Doug. But it's, it's all except for it's, Doug. It's all. Uh, it's all about no, now mental illness concerns. That's a whole other story. But I think it's just all a matter of degree, of course, right? Yeah, everything's of course. a matter of degree. Everything's a matter of how, degree. How severe are the symptoms? How long do they last? And how you know how frequent are they? Mm -hmm. Do you worry about your you know your getting cancer once a month? Once a week or ten times a day. Right. Ten times a day is then you've got a problem. Absolutely. So, um, so what are the things you have done since you've had more direct experience than I? And I'm also going to then read something that a friend of mine has shared with me that has also struggled with this. Personal tips from this person, but what about yourself? Uh, well, what's an what's an example of a kind of illness you thought you had or might have? So, uh, an example would be um, pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. I. I I have a history of alcohol abuse and I was drinking too much and I was getting this burning sensation at the bottom of my, um, basically at my sternum, right, right at my right, sternum. Right, right. And I, I had it pretty bad for a few days. And when I, I tend to run anxious anyway, okay? I tend to ruminate, I tend to obsess, um, I tend to catastrophize or whatever. And when I'm doing something inherently dangerous, right, a behavior, lifestyle, or whatever, that I know can have deleterious effects on my health, and then I feel some a sensation, my brain automatically goes to the worst. So I ended up going online, and I searched up burning sensations in the stomach, and I found pancreatitis, and then I read endlessly about pancreatitis, and I watched videos about pancreatitis, and I was convinced that at any moment, stomach acid was going to burst out of my pancreas or however that works, I don't quite remember, so don't quote me on that, and caused me irreparable damage and endless pain that I could never recover from, wow. something like is, that. Is that what happens in pancreatitis? It's really, really bad. Yeah, it's really, no really idea. bad. And I mean, and, there, and there's a lot of that, but, but for me, it was just, um, it, it was always in conjunction with living a little bit outside of my truth and my purpose, right? It's not like I was living, let's say, a clean, well-rounded life and then wondering about, uh, let's say, cancer. It was, no, I'm binge eating, I'm not sleeping enough, I'm not doing any self-care, I'm binge drinking. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly, I'm clearly behaving in a way that might elicit something negative, like like smoker worrying about lung cancer, or a binge drinker worrying about their liver, or, um, Whatever, you get what right. I'm saying. Absolutely. So as I behaved in a way that was not conducive for stability and peace, I immediately started jumping to worst case scenarios as my mental health was not as stable and, and as I became more and more fearful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's sort of like one of the examples of the mm -hmm. things that happened to me was uh, was that. Yeah. You know, it can start very early. Mm -hmm. I have a, a friend who, um, when she was very young, uh, you know, a relative had cancer, and she was, you know, I don't know, maybe five, six or something. Sure. And she thought, oh my God, maybe that's going to happen to me. That that fear came right. to her at a very young age, and it somehow stuck around. And uh, so sometimes you can pick up beliefs when you're young. Absolutely. Or maybe you're young and you see people around you getting sick, and you th it just starts to rub off on you. Absolutely. So you know, it it can start at an early age. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things my friend told me about, uh, in terms of a tip for any of you out there dealing with this, is to avoid going to doctors, like, you know, let it like be once every two weeks, sure. not three, four times a week, sure. and and avoid getting too many tests. Yeah. Because you, you can try to test for everything, mm -hmm. especially if you go to like a naturopath or people outside the allopathic profession. Oh my God, they've got, like, you know, candida. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, candida is a new age disease. My, my friend and I used to say, have you ever heard of a truck driver with candida? I mean, it's kind of a joke, right? right. You know, overgrowth of yeast in the intestines and all these protocols. Now, I know you, th 
e yeast overgrowth can be a big problem, mm -hmm. but a lot of times, you know, it, it's it, people imagine it when it's probably really not there. Sure. So, um, but alternative doctors, God bless them, we need them. But sometimes they're willing to go down the rabbit hole. They really and are. try to find things, you know, that a regular doctor would never even think of. Right. And, and sometimes these things are just bogus. Yeah. But anybody out there who's a naturopath, chiropractor, integrative medicine, I am not criticizing you, believe me. Uh, we need in this culture, you know, more people teaching people how to live and develop healthy lifestyles and not just, you know, rely on drugs and surgery all the time. But mm -hmm. there is, you know, if you go to an alternative doctor, they can really go with you on these, these esoteric tests, you know, that you're looking for something which really there's nothing there. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and you know what, the, the health anxiety play right into the mental health anxiety, fear of what may be, fear of what could be. And, and what ended up being profoundly powerful to me were a couple of things. One, having a morning structure and routine that, that was based around setting my mind into a calm, right, peaceful right. space. You brought this up to me a long time ago. I don't right. know if you remember this. And take this serious, guys. This is a pro tip. Uh, when you first wake up, you're in what's known as a hypnagogic state. Hypnagogic. Hypnagogic state, excuse me. Uh, and same thing right before you go to bed. Or maybe hypnagogic. I don't remember if it's a G or a G. Either but, way. But you're it's in, a you're, very, you're, it's you're a very in impressionable time very impressionable of your time day. You're, you're right just, before bed. And yeah, yeah, your subconscious is really open. Absolutely. Anything that you put into your brain or expose yourself to when you get up in the morning and when you go to sleep, you are really vulnerable to absorbing that. Yeah, and I took that really, really serious when you brought that up to me because uh, I found that when I woke up and my first thing was right writing out my daily gratitude, my daily affirmations, saying things like, I am disciplined, I am loving, I am peaceful, um, I, I am a good person, I am capable of being calm, things like that, my goals for the day, the five things I'm grateful for, like I just said, what would make today great or whatever. When I did that, when I did my meditation reading, when I did some stretching and some deep breathing, a little bit of grounding, I found over time, of course most things are compounding, right, but I found over time that my propensity to worry just went down right. in spite of myself action-based stuff that helped the mm -hmm. other thing and by the way that's ritualistic that's every single day and i can prove it to you here's my five minute journal app this is from today and there it is i wrote that today june 21st let me see that uh, I wrote, I'm grateful for access oh, right. to pro-help for my mental health. Thing. Grateful for Douglas Block. I appreciate that. No, he didn't write that. But Not no, today, <laughs> but I've written that before. I've written that before. Uh, so that was a big one. And the other one was, and these need to be rules, guys. It's like To me, that's a non-negotiable because I believe in the potential benefit. The other non-negotiable terms, or in, uh, in the context of health anxiety, is that I do not search on Google more than once. If I really need to, I get one look. One. That's it. That's my hard, fast rule. So let's say I'm having just a, a pain in my stomach or, or an ache somewhere or whatever. I get one glance, one. I can learn about it for a few minutes and then I move on. I move on because it is a, there's, it's an unsatisfying road because we don't have what's known as a differential diagnosis. No. What do doctors do? They have to do... Basically, doctors have a, a large group of symptoms, right? And it's their job to shorten that down into something meaningful. It's not something you or I can, can do in any productive way. And it can only stand to make things worse and manifest right. some symptoms and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah I just... Yeah, yeah, differential diagnosis. People without training can't do that. But they, they really can't. But something you said is so important, and there's the, the ritual that, that um, uh, Noah uses, the structure both in terms of mind and body, this can be used to deal with any kind of anxiety, sure. not just any kind of rumination, any kind of obsessive thinking, any kind of fears. I had a video I did on my channel called The Best Way to Avoid Anxiety, you know, what is it? And then the answer was get occupied. Mm -hmm. And so when you get up in the morning and you have something to do, somewhere to go, something to think about, you know, like like two thoughts cannot occupy the same place at the same time. They really can't. It's like two bodies, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's called in the old metaphysical days, it's called thought substitution. So if you're too busy thinking about what you're grateful for, getting up and doing your stretches, walking around the block, watching the birds, if, if your mind is focused on things like that, there is no room for the devils of the negative thinking yeah. to come in there and harass you. I fully so you've agree. got to go ahead and take control of your own thinking, your own control of your own acting, and this is just general mental health because there's not just worries about, you know, cancer or AIDS. There's worries about, you know, I'm going to be, I'll never get out of this depression. Sure. Or I'll, I'll be out on the streets. Gosh. Or my, you know, my, my partner will leave me. Or, you know, we got this guy, God bless him, on my video channel. He's always on the live chat. He's always worried about that nuclear war is going to erupt between mm. South, uh, North Korea and the United States. Now, I agree there's a risk. But this guy, that's he all he can think about. Stress. I mean, it, he, it, he just stress. goes on on and on he, until he, he, that's all he can think about. Yeah. It becomes his whole reality. So there's a good example of obsessive 
thinking gone awry and it can be about anything. Health just happens to be one thing, but boy, as I say, I don't know why in this culture, maybe it's because we're all trying to be perfect and well and look good. Uh, I, I'm sure in a third world country, people are not doing that. They have real concerns, like okay. getting like food Sh and water. Shelter. And sh survival, yeah, right? Absolutely. Like, you know, so I, I think health anxiety is probably a, a first world problem. Right, but it is still a real problem. And listen, um, something that, that is important to take here, and this is something I've had to take to heart and I continue to be mindful of, is that there are actionable steps that you can take. And there needs to be guidelines that you just understand about yourself. I don't think it's a sign of weakness that when you watch Grey's Anatomy or... or uh, I can't think of a modern ER show, right. but like doctors or ER, or whatever. You watch a, a medical show and you see house, you see all of these strange things that can be, it triggers you. Like for, I had to stop watching those shows. I just did. I realized I don't currently have, you're fine. I realized I didn't currently have the, the capacity or the capability to modulate those sort of uh, entertainment shows. I'm turning I, off my watch, everybody. Go ahead. You're fine. Yeah, I just I just found like those are triggers for me. And, and until I can prove to myself beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can handle that trigger, I just avoid that because I know it tends to stir me up. That's the sort of thing that you can just put in place with yourself and accept a little bit about yourself until perhaps you get into a, a better space. The other thing is control the things you can. I always know, and there's a correlation, when I'm controlling the things I can uh, to the best of my ability, my diet, my lifestyle, my social circle, my sleep, uh, my self-care, all of these things, when I'm really assuming a, an incredibly responsible adult role in those activities, my anxieties, my stresses, my worries, my health anxieties, they just proportionately go down. When I am not assuming adult responsibility for my life, for whatever reason, we all F off sometimes, we all binge eat, we all stay up too late, we all do things that, that over time, when, when done too much, can lead to bad stuff. My anxieties, my health anxieties, it all gets worse. So when I'm behaving in a way that, that is like conducive for feeling well, staying healthy, managing whatever, it just gets better. And I think that's important to remember is that you'll you'll build that credibility within yourself over time. Like so for me, I try to eat 80, 90% of the time whole foods, mostly plant-based, lean meats, blah, blah, blah. I'm really, really good about my diet. I exercise four or five times a week, very, very religiously. I drink lots of water. And I, I do all of these things because, and people oftentimes don't believe this, because mentally speaking, it helps me go about my day-to-day -day business. Physically, it's a, the secondary thing is I get to be lean and feel good or whatever. But mostly, it's because when I do those things consistently, I just don't worry as much because I know I'm taking care of myself. He gets my number one self-care award <laughs> for the month of June 2019. No, no, Yes, no. yes, yes. The man, but well, you should have seen him when I met him. He was a mess. He was I sitting was around smoking mess. pot all day long. I wasn't like, smoking I know you were. I was giving you a hard time. Anyway, but... Uh, one final thing, you know, I want to say because you know they usually turn us off after four minutes anyway, right? Yeah, I know. We're just talking to ourselves. Yeah, now. no, no, no. Hey, should, no, hold on. Funny if you're still here, type in the comment section below, Peggy, P E G G Y. <laughs> if you're still here watching, Peggy, that means you made it 20 minutes into the video with Doug and I. Yeah, and Peggy is my nickname uh, for my goddaughter. It stands for peg leg because I've had cellulitis in my lower ankle uh, 20 oh, different times. And no health anxiety even over that. Yeah, I uh, know. In, in August of last year, I was absolutely sure I was going to get it again. But after a month of wellness, I just forgot about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've had it 20 times, boys and girls. This is what happens when you live to be 70. Anyway, so the last thing is that, uh, has it really been 20 minutes? My goodness. Yeah, I'm, like the, I'm just, running, like the schmooze, just but running, anyway, just running my mouth. So um, yeah, so there's a book by called uh, Brain Lock by Jeffrey Schwartz about people who have OCD. Really? Yeah, it's an amazing book. And one Brain of the things, Lock? Brain Lock. Your brain is locked onto a thought and can't get out of it. So one of the things he mentions, the affirmation he tells people to say over and over again mm. when they start to upset, it's not me, it's my OCD. Mm. In other words, it's my brain that's a mess, not me. And you disidentify with what's happening and just blame it on your brain. Which yeah. is because that's what it is, a brain disorder. Of course, there's a medication called Luvox, L-U-V-O-X, which I can't recommend. I'm not, but I've seen many people take it. It stops obsessive thoughts. It's mm. probably used with health anxiety. But... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do believe, like with any mental health disorder, time, intention, 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 and, and intention, intention. Yeah. It's, it's set the intention to heal, reach out for support, get support, and yeah. use all these different tools, and uh, you will eventually make progress. You will eventually make progress. I'm going to cough. <laughs> cough. Do it. Let it out, old man. <clears throat> 20 minutes is too much. It is too much. Well, listen, that's another... I don't care. We're, we're going long. I don't care. People are... Peggy's still here. Uh, right. But... 
But uh, you don't have to believe you can get better, by the way, to get better. And thank God for that, right? Would you and, agree? Yeah, zero calories, right? <laughs> you don't have to believe that. <laughs> no, look, no, you, you no. Know, you just don't. You just have to take the action and let the results happen. I, I have improved or overcome things in spite of what I thought I knew or believed about myself many, many times. And thank God for that. Because when you're in a hopeless state, it's hard to see out of it. Uh, when you're worrying all the time, you wonder if you'll always be that way. It's not It's not the truth. You just, <clears throat> you just have to trust the process. As long as you have a process, there, there's something doable. Oh, yeah. Last thing, um, affirmation. He was smoking pot before we started filming. <clears throat> no, no, That's I, why he's I, coughing. No, I have, I have a cough due to a side effect of an lysinopril. Because I'm, I, I take blood pressure medication because I'm uptight. Oh. All right, but anyway, um, <laughs> let's do some deep breathing for you, Doug. Oh my God, there thank you. you. Go. No, anyway, You're um, welcome. so it's a soft shot. Affirmations, affirmations, just what, look, very expensive. Hey, look at my man rocking the, the turtleneck, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's got, he's got old my, school. My swag. video ever said I, I look in turtleneck. Old so anyway, school swag. Anyway, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, I went to five prep schools. Don't worry about it. Um, Don't worry about it. Yeah, um, I'm just super smart and really messy. Right, but that's exactly that's a great diagnosis. Um, yeah, affirmations. God in me is my health right now. Uh, affirmations are great every day. You know, the spirit. Every the day. spirit of truth runs through me, revitalizing every cell of my body. There are so many good health. Uh, matter of fact, if you email me and you can put this on the screen, DouglasBoggyGmail.com in my book Words That Heal, which I wrote. 30 years ago, mm -hmm. I have a whole list of affirmations for health and healing. And mm -hmm. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe in the power of the spoken word. I believe in the power of thought. And if you read some of these affirmations I'm going to send you for free, it will really help you with your health, anxiety, thoughts. And there, of course, there's infinite amount of affirmations you can create. Mm -hmm. But um, these are good. So DouglasBlogGmail.com. Uh, and when I get my 19,000 emails, I'll probably answer them sometime in 2050, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Listen, last thing I want to say, guys, is please, uh, thank you for, one, being here with us, right. uh, talking about mental health topics, supporting our channels, <laughs> and, and supporting yourselves. But listen, also, in the comment section below, talk about what are some mental health or some, some health anxieties you've right. dealt with. What are some of the ways that you have overcome them? What are some tips and strategies? If you just need to vent and you're hoping for some support, do that in the comment section below. This is very much a conversation. This is not a, uh, we're not talking at you. I believe how this works is we're talking with you. Just the medium for you to respond is down below. So join the conversation. If you heard something here, or you like something here and you felt something good, please consider coming back and seeing us again. Doug's uh, YouTube channel, for those of you that are watching on my channel, link in the description, go check it out. His support group, his book was a big reason why I didn't commit suicide right. and I was dangerously depressed. Uh -oh, uh, and you if you're on, you're going to be demonetized. You mentioned that word. I oh, did. Well. Oh, we would have been demonetized <laughs> anyway. And uh, and if you're watching this on Doug's channel, please consider checking out my channel. There might be something there for you. Oh yeah, you. Noah, Noah's, um, Noah's the man. Look at that gift of Gavin. Mean, you know, might as well be uh, a New York comedian. I am a Gavin. Anyway, anyway, so um, well, oh yeah, one more thing. I'm going to put a plug in. I was just on a guest on a podcast for the first time. Oh, congrats! In, out of Detroit, it's a really cool. It's called Liz Life Guru. Mm. It was on June seventh. Uh, anyway, we'll have a link to that podcast. I talked for an hour about depression recovery, and the people who um, interviewed me are absolutely awesome. One is a therapist, and the other is a gal from my uh, YouTube uh, live chats who overcame a suicidal depression and mm. is now on the road to recovery. God bless her. God bless her. Indeed. Julie did a great job, and you know I'm I'm so proud of you. So. Well, you know what? I think we're going to do these uh, once a day now. I'm having such a good time. Yeah, Except this he, pretty nice. he lives in Beaverton. It's, it's, like, it's like five hours from where I live in the, the Northeast Portland. So we're going to have to somehow find a way to t teleport ourselves and maybe get a helicopter. Maybe we just start doing Skype interviews together. Oh, that's very good. Then I don't have to slap. You know, it's going to take me two hours to get back to the yes, Portland traffic. All right, is guys, we're, we're signing out. All right, all right, now goodbye. we have a second tier of it. If you've made it this far, you're going to put <laughs> Peggy 2. And all the Peggy people are going to be really confused. But if you made it 25 minutes into this video, well, Peggy we, should, two, we should give them a prize. We should give them if a you, prize. If you type Peggy 2 in, I'm going to send you uh, the thing that uh, Noah uses. Remember the five, what do you call it? The five yes, parts of the five, the five the principles. Five, the five principles of self-care. The five yes. principles of self-care. Okay, so the yeah. color chart. Peggy 2, we're going to send you a color chart for five principles of self-care with a little breakdown of the details of what those but, five but things yeah, are. But you have They're, to type in Peggy 2. Peggy. And, and your email address. N number 2. Peggy and number 2. Number two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for being here with us. Uh, God bless. We'll talk soon.